Hi, I'm Peter Gianetti with the International Housewares Association, and welcome to IHA Market Watch 2021. It's a special series that will explore the evolution of key lifestyle trends that have been driving the home and housewares business this year and beyond. I'm here with the collaborators of the IHA Market Watch Report, which debuted last year to spotlight how trends and corresponding consumer attitudes and behaviors are being shaped by the COVID pandemic. I'm pleased to introduce the Market Watch authors. I have Liana Salama, who's the Vice President of Marketing for IHA. I have Tom Marabli, who is the founder of Springboard Futures and the Consumer Trend Analyst for IHA. And I have Joe Derachowski, who's the Vice President and industry, Home Industry Advisor for the NPD Group. We'll cover four key trends this year, time, space, comfort, and safety and security. These trends continue many of the themes that we presented in the inaugural Market Watch a year ago underscoring how such lifestyles often don't simply start and end suddenly, but rather how they can take root and evolve as foundations for consumers that present big opportunities for manufacturers and retailers. During each segment, our market watchers will reveal key findings and actionable insights. New to this year's report is a special showcase of new home and housewares innovations that demonstrate efforts by the industry to address these trends and to serve evolving consumer needs and preferences. Before we start, uh, Liana, tell us a little bit about the process and objective behind the second annual Market Watch. Yeah, so much like the first you know, inaugural Market Watch report that we did last year, the concept is really about bringing consumer needs and trends to the forefront when we talk about home and housewares industry trends. It's less about incidental purchases and more about the lifestyle that consumers are trying to create by making those purchases. So the report takes you know, macro consumer trends and then talks about ways that manufacturers uh, and retailers can help address those trends through product development, through inventory management, or through marketing. In a lot of cases, uh, things that fulfill these trends, as we'll talk about, are things that are already out there in the marketplace. They're not necessarily new inventions, but they require a new way of marketing or a new way of positioning to meet the emerging consumer need. Yeah, well, you're, you're going to learn how many of the trends, the four trends that we're talking about, they intersect with one another, and the products that we'll feature will also demonstrate how something that might be comfort at one point could also be about space or about time or about security. This segment is going to focus on space. And space has really gone through this kind of this rapid evolution in the last 12 months, uh, which has been quite a year in general since we last convened to talk about the market watch. Tom, kind of give us a general perspective of, of what's what's kind of what have we learned in the last year as we prepare for this market watch, and and where does space kind of fit into that evolution? Well, space is what's interesting about space is it's kind of bifurcated, you know. So you've got. Uh, there's a lot of talk about people because of the pandemic, because it's been a protracted pandemic, uh, people moving out to the suburbs. So you've got some people who were suddenly, whereas last year we were really focused on, you know, um, I want to say urban living, but the fact that a lot of people were living in smaller spaces, you know, you, uh, uh, big generations like boomers moving, uh, you know, out of homes and into smaller dwellings. Now you've got people moving into larger dwellings, and that's something we're going to see, and Joe disagree, but, but it's something we're going to see over the next few years. It's not right away, so we really have to keep our eye on both prizes. The first is having some more space to maybe play with. The second is the, the tension created by the spaces that we're living in having to function in multiple ways. Your dining table is your office one minute, it's your dining table the next minute, you know, and things like that, and just really looking at, at spaces and objects more flexibly. And also, it's not just, it's the more flexibility. You, you are sharing that space with, with many generations of people oftentimes mm -hmm. that have different needs during the day uh, for that space. Joe, yeah. what, what have you seen happen kind of in general over the last 12 months, and how does that set up the, the discussion of space as we're going to do it? Well, one, the home and housewares industry has been very, very hot. Of all the industries we track at NPD, uh, small appliances and housewares have been number two and number three across all the industries in terms of speed of growth. Um, and so because of that, the industry itself has been hot, which means there's so many new needs. And in the other sessions, we're talking about different needs, but we forget about it's not only the needs, as you said, throughout the day, but it's also needs expanded throughout the house and outside of the house and into the garage. And so we've just really have looked as part of our desire to be entertained and the desire to deal with the angst of being in a social confinement of really expanding the space within the home uh, into different areas. And it just has led to a lot of innovation opportunities. 
What have you learned about space in the last year, and how well, does that sort of apply? Well, I, I think the biggest uh, learning here is kind of the, the elephant in the room in front of us, which is that um, you know when you talk about space, you automatically think about, and last year it certainly was the case, you're thinking about um, products that fit into a smaller space or that you know are more compact in nature. And the fact of the matter is we're sitting here with products talking about space that are the largest products that we have dealt with this entire series. Mm -hmm. um, but what it really means is that you know we're moving away from talking about necessarily how products fit into a space or don't fit into a space, but how do they help transform that space? How do they help that space serve multiple purposes and act as one, you know, one room during the day and another room in the evening? And how do you move people outdoors you know, when the weather is nice enough to do that? So how do you take the existing space you have and expand it into other areas? Yeah, it's not just about finding the smallest products to do the job that larger products did. It's about effective and efficient use of space and understanding that what you may see initially when you look at a product isn't always everything that it delivers to you. And that's one of the things we'll do as we take a look at several products that fit our renewed and evolving definition of space. Okay, so sometimes it's about, you know, it's about expanding your spaces you know, into the outdoors and repurposing rooms for other functions. But sometimes space really is about space and about mm -hmm. conserving space and about things that store in a more compact manner that allow you to maximize, you know, cabinet space in particular when it comes to kitchens. So what we have here is the Master Pro Smart casserole set by Bergner. And you know, of course, when you look at it like this, this looks like it would be an absolute pain to store, right? But what's great about this is it nests absolutely perfectly. So So literally, lids and alls, right? So not even the lids have to stack up. So it goes from four, from having this plus three to just this. So it all fits in there perfectly. So this is a great space saver when you're looking at storage. And cabinet space is always at a premium. I swear, it doesn't matter how big your kitchen is. It's like they say about, about you know, purses, right? Mm -hmm. You will expand to fit the space that you have. Mm -hmm. Berger does a great line of... of, of, of um saute pans as well, fry pans that nest beautifully. But I think the, you know, when we look at this type of product and a lot of what we're looking at today, it's got to have a design aesthetic. You know, the era of something that's functional but passable in terms of the way it looks, it's gone. You know, now functionality, the, and, it's, and because our spaces are, you know, we're more concerned about our spaces, sometimes for some people this has to be out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, for small apartment dwellers, you know, the biggest pieces sometimes wind up sitting on the stove and it's got to look right. It does. Joe, do you have any insights on kind of kitchen use right now and, and how, how consumers are adapting to that? Well, one, sales of all cookware and bakeware is doing very, very well. Um, I think what's happening is when we looked at this, we're looking at a lot of the demographics. And the demographics, part of the growing demographics is that group that's hitting that empty nester stage. So do they upsize, do they downsize, do they remodel, do they buy a second place? How does that work out? But in the end, they're gonna be trying to maximize the space they have. The other part is the group that's retiring and about a third of them move away from home. So again, it's gonna be a smaller space that they're really trying to maximize. So anything that can help maximize the space that you have is there. And as you said, it's not just for that group of population, but anybody in their kitchen is always trying to maximize as much space as they have. Well, and I feel like I've heard, a, I've heard a lot more lately as more and more people are able to work remotely and it looks as though that's gonna be the norm for the time being. And as virtual learning has become, you know, certainly, I mean, believe me, it's come a long way from where it was a year ago. It's not perfect yet, but it's, mm -hmm. it's come a long way. You know, I keep hearing more and more stories about people who are planning to sell their homes and buy a giant RV and cruise the country, yeah. you know, and kind of live that lifestyle for a while. And again, you want to talk about space being at a premium. I mean, I know some of these RVs have these great, you know, expandable compartments, everything else. But if you're going to live in one, you know, you, space is absolutely at a premium. The one last thing is, when you talk about this type of product, you talk about shareworthy, you talk about, again, we're sharing a lot of the, the things that we're doing. We're, we're sharing our cooking you know, expedition, so to speak. And something like this, you can see what's going on in it. You know, there, yeah, it's, it it's a the part clear, of the, the process. Clear lid on there are top. A, you know, a lot of the things that we're looking at today, they look great, they're photogenic while you're doing, in process, which is important.
multi-cookers are really at the core of space, right? Because they, they, you're talking about one product that can perform the function of multiple products. So what we have here today is the TriStar Power XL grill air fryer combo. And don't let the words grill air fryer combo fool you. This bad boy can cook 12 different ways, <laughs> including sous vide, including steaming, including uh, sauteing, um, including slow cooking. So it has a multitude of functions, takes the place of all kinds of different appliances. So with one uh, piece of machinery here, you can accomplish 12 different types of cooking. Technology has changed the ability to to apply various cooking methodologies to the product, and now consumers totally embrace the multi-cooker technology. Joe, you must have some, some research indicating over the last several years how this, this general category has grown and maybe some of the sort of subcategories encompassed by it? Well, cookers themselves has been growing dramatically yeah. over this period, especially because we're eating more meals at home. I think the key when we think about cookers is the ability to be utilized frequently. Right. So whether it is something that is utilized multiple days, dinners during the week, whether it's utilized at dinner, lunch area, or in breakfast, or just different cooking techniques is important because we want to limit the number of items that we have on the counter or in the cabinets. But as we do that, the key is that it still performs. So the big opportunity that cookers really has is because consumers will be working from home forever, for a long time, uh, whether it's even on a hybrid model, cooking more than before, there's a chance at lunch that we really haven't tapped into. There's a chance at dinner we, because there'll be more frequency of them happening and the same thing at breakfast. So anything that can help hit all those different occasions and hit as many occasions as possible is great. Emphasis on performance. They do expect each, yes. every function to perform at the highest level. And what I really like, you know, with this one in particular is that in addition to kind of the traditional comfortable cooking methods, right, like grilling, like even air frying has become relatively mainstream. Yeah. It also does things like sous vide, which has, you know, it's, I mean, it's been around, but not everybody's tried it. So in addition to kind of performing, you know, the blocking and tackling that it needs to do, mm -hmm. you know, it also provides opportunity for consumers to try something a little bit different. You know, what I like about it is you have to really think about less and less the way this works when you do these separate settings. Each one, the temperature and the time is already set in. I don't have to deal with separate things. And one of the things that we're hearing more about is cooking days because there's been a degree of, you know, cooking fatigue, baking fatigue. So people are starting to talk about, okay, you know, Sunday's my cooking day. With something like this, with a multi-cooker, you can do a whole bunch of things for the rest of the week in one day. They go in the fridge, you store them. And, you know, it's again, it's sort of counterintuitive to talk about space and then have this thing that's big. But as Joe said, you can't ignore the fact that it replaces so many other things well. I know how passionate you are about content as you know a part of what goes along with all of this. And you know, you'll be pleased to know that the um, the instruction booklet for this comes with something like 25 different recipes mm -hmm. for all of these different types of cooking techniques. So that again, and we've talked about this before, if there is something, you know, if you've never done you know, air frying before, if you've never done sous vide before, it makes it accessible to you by offering you a recipe to get you started, get you comfortable with it, and then you can go from there. And to keep you interested. Mm -hmm. You know, we have products have to evolve with the consumer. If, at our business, a lot of the great products we've looked at over the course of this week have been about evolutions of things that were already happening. This is great whether I'm in or whether I'm having people over again and I want to show my stuff and you know, so it's, but content is, is essential to well, anybody. I think one of the things which you call out, which is a great point, is we have to win the consumer's mind and we have to win the consumer's heart early. Mm. The retailers depend on it. So it's critical that brands work hard to help win that heart and mind to help create the pull into the retailer mm. for those needs. So anything that they can do to win that part of it is also going to help our retailer partners. So as we mentioned during, you know, that when we kind of started out this session, when we talk about space, it's not just about having more space or less space, but it's about utilizing space in different ways and new ways. And certainly one of the things that has really been, um, you know, has really been hot this past year with the pandemic has been outdoor living and outdoor entertainment, because it's certainly an environment that is easier to social distance, but it's also, you know, you feel a little better about, you know, the chances of particles actually coming into contact with you. And what's great about outdoor living these days is that it's just expanding 
expanded way beyond your traditional kind of grill, um, you know, cooking. So what we have here is the Uni pizza oven, and this is an outdoor gas-powered pizza oven that can cook a pizza. It, it heats up in 15 minutes, really? and it cooks a pizza in 60 seconds, a 12-inch pizza. Wow. Yeah, so when you talk about entertaining, I mean, and again, in other sessions we've talked about customization and, you know, uh, giving people their choices, but it is very easy to cook, essentially, you know, a personal or two-person size pizza in 60 seconds, move on to the next one and have mm -hmm. yourself kind of a traditional pizza party, but outdoors. Yeah. As you move more of your life outdoors, you're bringing more stuff outdoors. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in, in this case, this is a product that actually is a f relatively compact product, uh, even though it's being used in an outdoor space. So they've taken that into consideration in terms of trying to increase and enhance its utility. Well, and these legs all pop down too, which when we were unpacking it, I was like, wow, you can actually like, it takes up less space than it even looks like it takes. Right, in right, storage, right. yeah. Right. But it's that, it's that same thing about bringing, bringing new experiences, bringing a restaurant experiences to the home, bringing new experiences to the home, the whole idea of entertaining and bringing into your space. Mm -hmm. And like you said, right now, whether the pandemic ends quickly, willing or, or not, outside is going to be the next big space. We're all talking about what we're going to do outside this summer you know, uh, well, relatively soon, thankfully. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's just terrific. The other thing, you know, one of the things we talked about earlier was the importance of security and people being able to have their own food. Mm -hmm. Well, pizza typically was a shareable item, but this allows each person to have their own individual item mm -hmm. to be safe, whether it's with friends or family. The other part is pizza is such an important part of our lives. I mean, it is the number one thing we're gonna eat on a Friday night, you might even be able to have, as we're outdoors, people having movies or whatever the case that's going to be out there. But it just allows a chance to have a very important food, be able to personalize it, to create a little bit of safety and security, and the ability to have a little bit of fun with it as and well. And the Venn diagram that you were talking about, Peter, of, I mean, if you didn't know that this was a space item, you'd say it was a time item. I mean, 60 right. seconds. Right, right. That's like, that, that's incredible. You yeah. don't have a ton of people waiting by a grill. And honestly, the design, the design ethic of this thing is just amazing. Yeah, it's, and it's an aesthetically pleasing, mm -hmm. you know, product to have in your backyard to show off to your friends when mm -hmm. you have them over. This next product is one that I personally am really excited about. It, it hadn't even occurred to me um, to look for something like this until it came across my desk a few weeks ago. This is the WBM Smart Projector, and what this does is it can throw a 120-inch picture onto a wall from only seven inches away, which if you think about a traditional projector, to create an image that large, think of how far back the projector mm -hmm. has to be from yep. the wall. This really enables you to turn just about any space, just about any blank wall that you have into a television or a movie screen or an entertainment center. I mean, when we talk about space transformation, what, what that means, this is, you don't think of all the things you can do with it right away. I mean, mm -hmm. like right now, one of the big things on Pinterest and Instagram, both are, are talking about you know, backyard movie nights, like drive-ins, yeah. creating drive-ins, things like that. Also, to be honest with you, if there's a big sporting event going on in the house and people come over, it's like, I can't send them anywhere except for the living room. This, I can send them out of the house. Right. You know, I mean, you can literally take, or your kids are Your man cave in the garage, making, right? You, know, you can make you know. any place the room you want it to yeah. be if it has to do with entertainment. Yeah, and you, can, you can move this really wherever in the mm -hmm. home right now. It can go in the garage if you're going to set up a, a shop in the garage. You can go down yep. to the basement. You can go into the living room. You can go in the kids' room. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's really one of those items that does, it, it's transformative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's one of the things that during the pandemic, we have seen so many unique creative hacks that the consumer has done. And if we can just watch for them and look for them and think, how can we leverage those? How can we participate in them? And part of it is just, as you said, we people were anxious and wanting to see friends and family. So they started doing more of the outdoor. Mm -hmm. People knew when the weather got colder, we still want to visit with folks, but we need to do it in a safe way. So we, they, we did the makeshift of the garages. It's these little adjustments that you go, okay, now if we do it, they're gonna entertain, they're probably gonna feed themselves, they're probably, there's so many little needs that they're gonna have in each of these spaces. We just have to look at them and think about it differently. Yeah, it's really the definition of when we talk about transforming a space and mm -hmm. saying that a space can be one thing during the day and it can be something else in the evening, can be something else on the weekends. What 
we have here is the New Air Flip Shelf Wine and Beverage Refrigerator. And what's really great about this is it's completely customizable. So, you know, you look at it, it has wine in the name. You might think of it as a wine fridge, right? And certainly, it is a wine fridge. You know, you see it holds the, has the grooves here to hold the bottles in place. But it also has some different depths of grooves. So here, they're a little more shallow to hold beer bottles. And then, all of the shelves actually flip over and lie flat so that you can store traditional cans, food, anything else that you would normally put in a refrigerator. So it's completely customizable based on what you actually need to store at any given time, which can change from day to day. Even a year and a half ago, we were laughing at people, I have a fridge in the bedroom, yeah. I have a fridge yeah. in the den, you know, and, and now it's just a part of the convenience of how we live. You know, it's, look, I work in the bedroom all day at my new office, mm -hmm. you know, and so I've, I've got, that space has got to be, I can't be traipsing back and forth, and even traffic in the house, you want to keep traffic down because you've got Zooms going on, all of those things. Yeah, not only is there a need for uh, a compact refrigerator for these alternate locations in the home, you need that compact refrigerator to be a little bit more versatile mm -hmm. uh, during the day. So it, it's, it has to accommodate different sizes of bottles, different types of beverage containers. Uh, and that's one of the things that I think consumers will address when they're looking to make that type of choice for a, for a secondary uh, refrigerator in the home. And again, depending on the situation, right? Because if you're entertaining, if you're having a party in the home and you have this, maybe you use it for one purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's more, right. you know, wine and beer oriented. Whereas, you know, from day to day, it may just be kind of an overflow refrigerator for those things right. that don't fit into the larger refrigerator because we're stocking up on more food these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, it, compact refrigerators have been growing for a while because we've been entertaining more and because we've been making other parts of the house, the basement or whatever the case, much more of an entertaining spot. So because of the pandemic, it grew again 54% this past year, mm -hmm. but it's also made it a sense where whether it's the garage, whether it's outside, whether it's just other parts, of, like you said, your office space, you can even have something in your work office space that's going to be coming. So it's just opening the door for all these other occasions. But one of the other things that it teaches us about all kitchen appliances is that it's not just about function. There's also a design element that has happened because if it's gonna be out in your house, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it fits your design aesthetics as well. And one of the things that Compact Refrigerators has done over the past several years is really advance the design part of it. I think uh, the other thing is that we've seen a lot of movement in specialty refrigerators. But like wine refrigerators only hit a like 10 or 20, 15 degree temperature range. What I love about the new products that we're seeing is that flexibility. I want it to be a fridge that gets really, really cold or I want, you know, there's more temperature flexibility in them and that lets us use it for different things at different right. times. Right, it adjusts to our needs versus us having to only it, use it for one the thing. The irony so. is that we would have thought of these as secondary refrigerators in the past. In many cases now, they're becoming primary yep, refrigerators absolutely. and the need therefore for not just great aesthetics, but maybe higher function, more features, more benefits, mm -hmm. uh, the willingness on the consumer to invest a little bit more in that type of product. Mm -hmm. yep. So once again, we've learned when it comes to space, a product can fit that category in many ways and many products fit that category in many ways. So when we look at kind of wrapping up, what, what's the biggest takeaways uh, Joe from space and again, how can retailers and manufacturers uh, understand uh, how to take advantage of that? Well, to me, the biggest thing to realize is working from home is now going to be a permanent thing, which has suddenly created different needs for different parts of the house and different pieces of space. Couple that with the demographic shifts, there's just all these opportunities. So for manufacturers, it's thinking about each of the rooms. It's thinking about each of our needs, whether it's uh, how we feed ourselves or what other, or other needs that we have in each room. Is there a different way to think about it? For retailers, they have to understand that the consumers think in this way. So how can they put together a whole package to really allow the consumer either to maximize the space or to get more enjoyment out of the spaces and to be thinking about the other parts of the house. And almost how can they show the consumer that? Yes. Uh, they can do that in store maybe, or maybe they can utilize digital uh, platforms to, to help tell that story as well too. How, how to inspire. Yeah. We've always been talking about for the last year aspirational trends. What do I want more of? I want more time, I want more space. You know, think beyond where we're living right now. We've got to start thinking post-pandemic. We've got, you know, and I think a lot of the products that we've looked at, the way we've been talking about it is very 
you know, space is going to be important going forward in a lot of different ways. The most important thing, though, is our homes are now, you know, we went through periods of the home is a cocoon and the home is a, a professional space. It's an entrepreneurial space. It's a, cra it's a creating space. And we've gotten spoiled by treating it a different way every year. It is all those things at the same time. It is our workspace. It's our play space. It's our social space. It's all of those and things. And a given room. Maybe yes, all of those exactly. things at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's important when we think of development, when we think of design, and when we think of marketing. You know, you keep hitting on that, Liana. It's it's it is all those things all the time. At the at, at the turn of a switch, it's got to be able to to convert. Yeah. I, I mean, for me, that is the biggest thing. Is about an individual room and how many different functions does it have to serve? Whether it is from morning to evening or from weekday to weeknight. Mm -hmm. And I think the more products that come out that help to contain room functionality at different times so that you genuinely, you know, here's what you don't want, right? You don't want to put a desk in the middle of the living room and then at night when you're having, you know, kind of movie night with your family, still have that desk there and just be reminded that it's really for something else. But, you know, one of those desks that folds up into the wall and goes away, mm -hmm. that's totally different. Now you've truly transformed the space. You're, you're not just using the space for two different things. You're literally changing the nature of that space from one moment to the next. And it's also one of the things you talked about marketing like that's also the consumer telling their story right, with right. the space so in addition to the functionality it has to be their expression um, it, it could be on a zoom call so it's yeah. got to be what it looks like or whatever the case may be but that marketing element is critical and that can be hard to do when yeah. you're when you're trying to accomplish multiple objectives in a single room to keep that sense of lifestyle and that sense of self you know to not feel like you're just you know jamming as much stuff into a room as you can because you have all these different things that you have to do in it well, I, think I think when we were looking at products today and over the past few days every time we look at something we're all imagining it in a different way and it's almost like the best product the you is built into it you see it and you see it in your life you know it becomes you immediately see the personalization in it I think a lot of the things that we've been excited by have been things that deliver a unique experience to you or you or you you know one of the, one of the other things you also say too in, in the other ones is how this touches on so many of the other needs that we talked about because mm -hmm. if you've got your space, as you said, if it's cluttered and it is jammed full of things, your comfort level is going to go down. You've got it so it's organized, it's, it's, it's crisp and clean the way you want it to be, your comfort level is going to go up. And mm -hmm. all these needs tie together. And I certainly think, you know, I mean, we, again, we keep coming back to working at home because that, I mean, that is one of the things that has just accelerated by light years because of the pandemic. You know, it was already kind of on an upward trend and it just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not likely to go back to the way it was. You know, it may go down a little bit, but, you know, and I think that I, I look at myself and my family situation, and we're right now considering upgrading to a larger home specifically because I need a dedicated home office. Mm -hmm. And for our industry, that's a huge opportunity. If all of a sudden you see yeah. people who are, you know, suddenly starting to actually build and, you know, furnish and outfit a home office for the first time. I think the point time. is behavior doesn't necessarily regress. It usually progresses. And, and we learned that throughout all of these discussions. And what we learned, I think, from space is when you listen to the consumer, the consumer will no longer fit themselves to your product. They're going to seek products that fit them. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for tuning in. For Tom, Liana, and Joe, I'm Peter. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much.